try this again. All right, so anyways, um, I got asked by my broker to do a presentation for um, the uh, the brokerage here. Um, he's out of town right now, so he just asked me to fill in. Having some technical di difficulties trying to get um, everything cracking, but y'all know how technology is. Anyways, uh, so I'm just going to do the presentation on Facebook Live, my laptop, and whatever, so... I can uh, fill in for the meeting later. Anyways, so this presentation here is going to be how I made 100k in real estate uh, last year. Actually, I've only been in real estate for about a year, uh, fiscal full fiscal year, working part time hours. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and just be sharing the knowledge, be sharing the game. I'm going to be giving up everything. I'm not going to be holding back. Um, and this information is for free. So you know, anyways, I thought it'd be a great idea to put the broker uh, presentation on Facebook. Um, so that I can catch more of an audience um, here join it trying to you know I get a lot of questions so anyways here it is so who am I so uh, this presentation is gonna be like part my website uh, and part what's up Sterling I see you brother uh, it's gonna be part of my website and part of the presentation so check it out so um, I'm 22 years old I'm about to be 23 this month I'm stationed here in Dallas um, we moved here back in 2008 and I've been here ever since we moved here from Virginia. Um, and if you asked me today, I probably wouldn't move uh, back pretty much to Virginia because Dallas is popping right now. Um, I got started in real estate back in 2015 in hopes of getting a little bit of extra money. Little did I know it would actually blossom into something great. Um, let's see, I've been interviewed and featured on the radio by credible business people. So I'm gonna pause real quick and show y'all uh, just a couple of things I've been on. So if y'all can see it on Facebook Live, um, I've been interviewed with uh, Texas Top Homes. Um, that's a little um, uh, st uh, business out there in Dallas. So I've been on their radio show. I got aired twice, sharing my knowledge. Um, I've been on an interview with Nick Ruiz. Um, basically, this is the guy that taught me how to do real estate with no money down. Um, I've been on an interview with iRadio USA, Eric Koppelman. Uh, that uh, station is actually out there in New York. I went on his show. Um, I got into Dallas Business Journal. Um, now, it wasn't exactly like featured in Dallas Business Journal, just to get it straight. So if you Googled it, you probably won't find anything about me. But I was, you know, I was on Dallas Business Journal. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, sorry. Wrong picture. Let's see. We're going to go back. All right. Um, I, I, I had an interview with uh, Todd Fleming and his uh, business partner, Jordan. Uh, I think they're out there in uh, Utah and as well as uh, Ohio. So that was a pretty cool interview. I mean, just to show you guys, I do have some street cred. Um, you know, I didn't get on these shows for nothing. You know, obviously I did have to prove, you know, some of the work I've done. So anyways, um, back to the slideshow presentation. Uh, let's see. I love my dogs and I like family time. So um, if you live here in Dallas and if you've ever done some work for me, you will find it very hard to reach me after 5 p.m. I don't pick up the phone for nothing because, you know, I, I like family time. I like hanging out with my family and, I, you know, I love my dogs. So that's where I'll be. Um, I've been in the car business for about five years now. So... Um, while I have been doing real estate part-time, I've still been keeping my day job. I've just found, you know, it was a great value to keep my day job. Uh, I don't actually use, uh, like, for example, I don't actually use my funds, you know, from the real estate to, you know, keep it floating. I actually just used, um, you know, my funds from my day job to fund real estate and keep it going, you know. And um, also, you know, it just keeps me busy. Um, there was one point where I actually did go part-time. I try to do part-time work and to try to do real estate full-time uh it didn't work out for me um you know i mean in real estate i found real easy that um, a lot of a lot of the deals take like 90 to like 180 days to close so i, I didn't like how i was out of cash flow um all right so anyway so the mindset that you should have if you want to start this business or whatever um i appreciate the audience coming in we have my broker watching uh, we got some audience on Facebook Live as well, so I appreciate all y'all watching. So this business is not for everyone, just to be upfront. Um, you know, I mean, it's it, it just not. It's just not. You have to be a people person. You have to be willing to put in work. Um, and you just really have to be willing to grind. Um, you know, I, I'll be upfront with y'all. It took me six months to get my first deal. Um, it took me six months to get my first deal. So just because I made 100K, it does not mean you will. So that's just a disclaimer. Um, the only reason why I made 100K is because I didn't I didn't give up. I kept going. Um, a lot of the content that I have is on Snapchat. Y'all see me 
Uh, oh, he just picked up a new house. Oh, he just got a, a new contract. But y'all, you know, I post the stuff behind the scenes so y'all can get a picture of what it actually takes and what it looks like in the back. Uh, I'm trying to do this business. It's just not all, you know, if, if someone told me today that, you know, like the journey I've gone through through real estate, I would have said F real estate. I don't want to do that because, I mean, it, you know, it's hard. I mean, this business is not easy. It's actually hard. Um, next is you have to commit and you have to stay the course. So um, during those six months of real estate, I tried everything. I tried, uh, you know, uh, direct mail, uh, Craigslist. You know, I thought I was going to get a deal tomorrow. I was like, yeah, I'm in the car business, man. You know, I'm a, um, you know, I'm a just stay, you know, I, I'm gonna close a deal tomorrow. I'm a, I'm, I can get this done. It wasn't like that. It took me six months to close my first deal. Um, I'm not saying it could have been done faster or whatever. Uh, but I'm just saying, you know, I mean, it, you just got to be patient and you got to commit to the course. It's, it's not as easy as people make it seem on TV. We flip that house, flip this house, property brothers, all that stuff. Um, you have to be consistent and you have to be willing to go through hard times. So this year alone, I've probably lost over $30,000 in revenue. Um, I mean, I had some really good deals that I just didn't act, you know, fast enough on. I was in California. I had a partner here managing the business for me. Um, you know, and those actually, one of them was 30 K. The other one was probably like a quick 10 to $12,000 profit. I lost, um, I've gotten sued this year. Um, you know, I mean, it's, I've gotten sued. I've gone through legal trouble and this is just all just me going through the journey. And like I said, Back when I was starting in 2015, when I was in the car business, if I saw what I was going to go through, I wouldn't have done this business. This business, like, I'm telling y'all, it's, it's not as easy as it makes it seems. But you have to be consistent and you have to be willing to go through these hard times. Um, another thing that, another pet peeve of mine is everything that you could ever want about this business or find out about this business is actually online. Um, you know, I have a lot of people, um, you know, they, they call me, they're like, hey, how do you do this? How do you do that? I'm like, are you that stupid? Like, You'll also find I'm very straightforward and I'm sometimes people think I'm a dick because I don't want to spend time with them, right? I mean, they'll ask me simple questions like what's a title company? What's a contract? What contract should I use? Well, hey, look, man, it's called Google. You should get on it and you should type all your questions on there and I'm pretty sure you'll find an answer. Um, nowadays, I never do one-on-one -on -one coaching anymore for free because of this very thing because all the information that you could ever find or ever want to do this business is actually online. So, you know, don't be a baby, man. Just you know, go out there, find it. I mean, if you want it bad enough, obviously you're gonna, you know, go and find it. So, anyways, here we go. So we're gonna get started on this content. So first things first is the buyers. You do not need any money to get started in real estate. This is a big myth. I had no money. Well, actually, I did have some money saved up in the bank because I was selling cars like candy bars, you know. So I didn't really have any money to buy a house, though. I didn't have a hundred grand. I didn't have whatever the median house price in Dallas costs right now. Um, you just don't need any money to get started. That's a myth. Buyers are everywhere. People want to do deals right now. They're like, I mean, there's millions of guys out there in Dallas, in California, in Florida. They all want to invest in Dallas. They all want a piece. And if you have a deal and serve it up to them on a platter, then they will buy it. Um, post ads on Craigslist and build a buyers list. I mean, this one's easy. I post, I, I, you pro, you folks have probably seen some of my ads. Um, it's a lot of BS ads. It's like, hey, you know, I, I got this house for sale. Um, you know, come, you know, come buy it. And it's really, it's really a, a bait and switch. And then I always hit them with, um, hey, you know what? This house actually sold, um, you know, but I do, you know, I do come across houses regularly. What's your email? I'm gonna actually show you guys a BS ad. Um, that I have in my account uh, real quick it's hard and you will have drops but like you said stay condition uh, stay consistent you all right Tim uh, all right where are these BS ads that I have all right so here's an example of one of them I'm not sure if you can see them on Facebook live um, for the brokerage the brokerage will be able to see this because they actually like they're actually on this webinar as well so here's one right here it says uh, three bedroom uh, three bedroom house two bath house near Tarrant Parkway in Denton um, this, I guess this, this one right here is in Fort Worth. All it says is I have a three bedroom house. It's in pretty rough straight, say, uh, shape. I've been sitting on it. It's vacant, blah, blah, blah. Needs this repair, needs that repair. And it has a stupid discount. Um, this right here will attract buyers like, like that. Um, and this is honestly the only way that I've been finding buyers, uh, when I first started, I have about 400 of them now. They're all on an email list and they just chill there and they just wait to get emails from me. 
it's really not that complicated. Um, I've heard of some crazy stuff on how to find buyers, going to auction, um, uh, you know, go, going to RIA meetings. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm one of the most laziest people you will ever meet. And if it requires way too much work, I'm not going to do it. So um, this is what I got out of the book that I read. And this is all I've been using. All my buyers have been straight off of here. And then ever since I became a realtor, um, I have even more buyers now. And then on top of that, I became a cash buyer myself. So um, that is one way that you can find buyers is you just want to put fake ads up on Craigslist to say, hey, um, you know, tr try and, you know, I have this house for sale. And then, you know, you really don't just say, hey, I come across more. What's your email and throw them on your list. Some people may be like, well, hey, you know what? That's deceiving or whatever. Um, you know, I don't want to do that. And my answer is I don't care, you know. Um, so let's see what else we got. All right, so yeah, collect emails and store them in the database. Keon, what's up, man? It's been like seven years. I, I, I didn't know you were still around me, Kenny. That's, that's what's up. Um, so uh, get the book Flip by Nick Ruiz. Actually, we're just going to go on Amazon. Um, for those of you who have been on my webinar and for my brokerage people who were on my last webinar, this is how I run my webinars is I like to use examples. So this book right here, Flip, this book right here, oops almost lost the audience there this book right here um, hold on yep there you go so yeah this book right here flip um, this is what this is the book that I actually got to you know start the business um, it's only what about 19 bucks um, it was the best 19 bucks that I've ever spent in my whole entire life you guys see it right there flip and pretty much I just read that I just read through that while I was at the dealership one day and I mean, I just did exactly like what it is it says. Now, check this out. Now, when you actually go to it, hold the camera over here. When you actually go to it, it says an unconventional guide to becoming a real estate entrepreneur, blah, 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 right? <laughs> it was funny because I had this one guy ask me. He said, hey, man. Um, and, you know, I told him about this book and I told him what it would do for him if you followed directions. And I just, you know, I told him, hey, this is this is pretty much what it can do for you if you follow through. He came back to me. He said, "Hey, man, um, do you have a guide on you know how to start the business and what I should do step by step?" I mean, I didn't even answer his question. I thought it was the most ridiculous question he asked me. I was like, "Bro, I just told you to get this book. You just showed me that you read the book. Yeah, I don't understand where your hangup is. You know, I'm pretty mean. You know, when it comes to business and money, you know, I don't play uh, because I value my time and I just I hate stupid questions. I'm sorry. If it's on the internet and you have to go and ask somebody, but it's all like already on the internet, I'm not going to answer your question. I'm I'm sorry. Um, so next is you do want to find a title company. Um, so wherever you are, um, whether you're in my market or whatever, Louisiana or, or Florida or whatever, if you just Google title company, there's going to be like a ton of them in your area. They do, you know, these are companies that close as real estate transactions. Um, make sure that the title company can do an assignment as well as a double close. Um, I'm not going to get into, you know, basically an assignment is where you just take your contract and you just assign it to you know, like the next person over. A double close is actually two transactions. Um, I don't want to explain all of that crap right now uh, because it's, it's a pretty long explanation. Um, so just Google it and see what it is and see how you can do it. Um, next is have at least one to two uh, title companies on deck uh, before conducting business. So you always want to make sure that you have title companies ready to go, um, ready to receive your deals and ready to facilitate the deals. Um, the ones that I use here in Dallas, uh, I use Scott Horn and Old Republic Title. Scott Horn is the plug. Um, he's actually located out here in, uh, in Garland, Texas. He does everything, uh, transactional funding, um, I mean, assignments, I mean, it, hard money loans. I mean, Scott Horn, Scott Horn is the plug. Old Republic Title is something that I use with my partner. Um, you can ask for Jennifer Wright. She's a very nice lady. She's very easy to uh, communicate with and should be able to get your uh, deals done there. Um, finding sellers all right so your business is dead without leads if you don't have incoming leads coming in you have no business so let me repeat that again because a lot of people are retarded and they just don't understand what this means if you don't have leads coming into your business you do not have a business okay I mean it's just plain and simple um, marketing needs to be about a weekly thing I, I usually make it about um, I usually make it about an everyday to a weekly thing. 
um, but you have to be out there. You have to cast as many lines out there in the sea as possible. Um, and I'm going to go over uh, marketing techniques as well. But it has to be a weekly thing. I mean, you can't just expect to market for like a month and then you're finished, right? I mean, you have to do it pretty much every week. Um, like I said, if you don't have marketing, you don't have anything. Um, let every know, let everyone know what it is that you do. So, you know, when I first got started, um, I did the complete opposite because, I mean, you know, in the car business, you have older guys there um, that work there, finance or whatever, and I mean, they all have egos and they think that if you're trying to get ahead of the game, um, then, you know, like, they're better than you. So I didn't let anybody know what I was doing. Um, even now, the car, the campaigns that I work, the, the business, you know, the stuff that I do, I don't really let anyone know what I'm doing. You guys will see a lot of stuff that I post on Facebook, and that's just because I want to stay relevant in the game. I want people to know I'm still alive, stuff like that. But if you go to my Facebook, it's not a personal thing. It's a straight-up marketing tool. It lets everyone know, hey, I, I got this deal. I got this deal. I'm proven. I'm the, I'm the one. You want to do business with me because I'm conducting. Um, business, you, you want to get in touch with me because you know I'm the best realtor in Dallas. You, you know I'm I'm speaking really loud on Facebook so people know what you know what I could do for them and their clients. So marketing methods. So this is a big one. So um, direct mail um, right here. You want to do uh, direct mail in an efficient manner. You can lose a lot of money doing direct mail. Um, what you want to do is you want to hit them with a yellow letter. So the first touch, you hit them with a the yellow letter, right? Uh, I'm not going to explain what a yellow letter is. I'm just going to tell you guys it's called a yellow letter. Google it. I'm pretty sure you'll find it. You're smart. Okay. All it says is, hey, my name is so and so. I want to buy your house. 90 days later, you hit him with another one. Hey, you know, I sent you a letter the first time. I'm still interested. You know, what, what can we do business? Now, the third day uh, or the third set of 90 days, you want to hit him with the postcard. So this postcard is just basically going to say the same thing, and it's kind of like your final, you know, touch. Like, hey, you know, I've been trying to reach you. I'm trying to buy your house. And, you know, this is the method that I learned directly out of the book. And, I mean, you know, if they don't respond, well, you know, then from there you got to decide if it's worth pursuing or not, um, if you want to spend your marketing dollars on there or not. Um, next is bandit signs. This is my secret weapon. All right, so it's going to be your name, buys houses, phone number. That is it. All right. Mine says Prince buys houses, and then I have a fake number on there that leads. Um, it's not my personal line. It's something else. So I'll put out about fifty to one hundred of these babies. Um, wait, hold on. I gotta adjust my camera. It's kind of messing up. Give me a second, guys. Ah, I can't. I can't really see the chat. It's like messing up. Oh wait, maybe I can. What was the name of the book? Yeah, Alex. It's called Flip. I just started a transaction with Jennifer. Hey, Jennifer Brazil, that's good, that's good. Uh, what's uh, All right, cool, so yeah, I'm up to date. Um, yeah, so keep the questions and comments coming. So anyways, like I was saying, so bandit signs, all right, it's your name buys houses, phone number. You could do we buy houses, phone number. I don't care, it's we buy houses, phone number. I mean, right, so I'll tell you guys a story. So when I was in the car business, I met a guy. I'm not going to tell you his name or anything like that, none of his private stuff. I told him, hey, man, this is what you put on your signs, right? He's like, all right, cool. So I give him, I'm like, hey, this is where you buy the signs. Go buy the signs. And he's like, all right, cool. So he buys the signs, he puts them out, and he tells me, Prince, I'm not getting any calls. And I'm like, well, what are your, saying? What are your signs saying? And this is what he told me. He said, uh, we do buy and sell fix and flip houses. I was like, dude, are you kidding me? I was like, how, how do people even have a chance to read that? I was like, I just told you what to put on your signs. And then after that, I just stopped talking to them. I don't, I don't have time to spend time with those people. I hate people that waste my time. If I tell you to do something, it's because it's making money. If it's not making money, I'm not going to tell you to do it. Makes sense? So, Bennett signs, we buy houses, your, your name buys, buys houses, phone number. Um, put out 50 to 100 a week or every other week. Um, be careful because... They are illegal, um, and you do have the city out there uh, lurking, trying to uh, you know trying to take them up. And it was crazy because two months ago, I actually got uh, stung on an operation. Like I got a call from a bandit sign. This lady called me. She posed as a seller. You know, we got there, and it wasn't a seller. It was like the city of um, I forgot what city it was, but it was like the city the city people, and they gave me a ticket on the spot. So you know, just be careful. Um, don't use your personal cell phone number when you do this, because if a cop calls you, he can obviously track you. Um, I have my phone number is quadruple masked, so like if you get my direct line, then you're like a CIA agent or something, because you will never find me. Um, so yeah, those are bandit signs. Um, you can do more stuff. 
Um, I've gotten leads off of Craigslist, classified ads. It's something I'm actually fixing to get into in the next couple of months. Um, handing out business cards, that's an easy one. It just says, we buy houses, here you go. Um, flyers, you can post it on people's houses. Uh, Post-it notes, uh, bird dogs. These are people that bring you deals, and if you close on them, just pay them. Um, you can buy uh, houses or property from REO agents or the bank. Um, that's also something I'm fixing to implement here in the next couple of months. Um, so yeah, I mean, these are marketing methods that work. Direct mail and bandit signs are about the top ones um, that are actually pretty good um, that actually do get deals. So like I said, I'm not going to tell you guys anything that hasn't got me a deal. So the only things that have got me a deal is direct mail, bandit signs, um, Craigslist have got me deals and that's about it. All the other stuff I'm still, I'm still kind of fine tuning in, but these are marketing methods that actually got me deals. So next, um, seeing the house and negotiating. So you want to touch on the pain points, right? So you want to let the seller know that you are the solution to a problem, right? Because obviously if you can't solve the problem, then these sellers aren't going to mess with you, right? Because they just want to know, can you buy my house? Can you get the house away from me? And I don't want to be involved in the transaction. So, you know, that's all they want to know. It, it depends on what type of seller you have. There's all sorts of motive, uh, there's all sorts of seller types out there. There's people who just want uh, to know a number on their house. There's people who want, you know, who actually are genuinely in need of help. Like some of the past clients I've had, um, one of the more recent ones I had was someone died in the family. They had a job relocation. They inherited another house. It was a big mess. So they didn't need the house that we're currently in. And that was actually the house that I'm rehabbing now. Um, that's due to close sometime this month. Um, the last rehab I did before that, uh, the seller said that he was divorced. He was like a payment or two away from being foreclosed. Um, he, you know, he, you know, he just couldn't afford it. The payments were high. His interest rate was stupid. So we just took over the payments. We rehabbed the house and we sold it for a profit. Um, you know, like the last. I mean, you know, there's all sorts of situations. Um, you know, I had one where. You know, there was like six sisters and brothers or something like that, and they didn't like want to split the rent. They didn't want to rent the house and split the rent. I mean, they weren't really motivated, but still, you know, I mean, if you're if you have good sales skills and good people skills, you can still get these deals. Um, so you want to touch on their pain points when you approach them, like, hey, you know, don't you don't you not want to have to deal with the house? And for those of you who don't know, it costs money every month to own a house: electric, taxes, insurance, um, repairs. Uh, uh, maintenance law you know the lawn I mean it, it actually you know and I'm finding this out myself you know me personally I've owned about two houses now um, throughout this whole fiscal year process I've been in the business and I like for each day that my house isn't sold I get pissed because it costs money um, Tim Rogers I wrote my own yellow letters when I first started in the business DYIY when you don't have a big marketing budget that's that's a good one Tim um, so yeah you know you just want to touch on these people's uh, pain points um, Next is you do want to build rapport with these sellers. Um, you don't want to just, hey, you know, my name is Prince. I have cash. I can do this. I can do that. No, no, no. When I approach a seller, I actually don't show them my interviews or I don't show them work I've done. I mean, I show them like one or two houses I've flipped, but I won't show them like, yeah, I'm actually, you know, I've done this interview. I've done that interview. I have this. I have this. I have that. I don't show them that. I go there, I find common ground, I mean, just about anything, you know, um, and it comes natural to me, maybe it's because I've been in sales for five years now, but it just comes natural, um, you know, I'll tell people like, you know, hey, I like the picture you have on this or whatever, I mean, just something to get them talking, and once I find their sweet spot about something they like, so for example, if they're into like Pokemon or something, this is just a, this is just a bland example, if they're into Pokemon or something, well, I am too. You know, if their favorite color is like yellow and mine really isn't yellow, well, now my favorite color is yellow. Um, you know, if their favorite dog is a pit bull, my favorite dog now is a pit bull. And it's just so easy to build rapport. I mean, I'm not saying be deceitful, but you just want to get on the same level with these sellers, man. I mean, you don't want to, you want them to feel comfortable with you and you want them to feel on the same letter uh, level. Um, whether you go dressed up in a business suit or a casual clothes, it's up to you. I've, I've done both before. Um, another thing is people think that if you have... Uh, a real estate license or whatever, it's going to affect the deal and it's, you're not going to get it. That's actually false. Um, I got my license and having the, my real estate license has actually helped me um, build rapport, not just in business, like with interviews and getting radio shows and all that other stuff, but it's actually helped me with the client because now like it's official, like, oh, so this is not some guy off the street. This guy actually has a license. He's actually in the business. He's actually submerged. 
So I just want to debunk that myth. Um, just because you have your license, you do have to reveal to them that you are a licensed uh, um, agent or whatever. Uh, but you know, it doesn't. It doesn't really. You know, it doesn't really mean anything. Um, next is you do want to come to the appointment prepared to close. So um, my deals about every time I go from like phone call to the door, my deals are already 90% negotiated. Like the seller already knows how much I'm willing to pay, but of course I'd have to go look at the repairs. The seller already knows what I expect. The seller already knows I'm coming in there um, to close the deal. So, you know, one thing, one thing that I just tell the sellers is, hey, you know what? I respect your time. I also respect my time. Just know that I'm coming in there with the contract expecting to get your house under contract. I don't go in there you know, saying, yeah, man, um, we're going to do this, and I'm just going to come there and look. You're not going to get deals closed that way. You want to have 90% of the deal negotiated uh, by the time you get to the door. Um, real quick, I'm going to pause take some questions. Uh, to, uh, Michael Merritt says, TLO shows your sell in 041 with 80 per 6 confidence. Not sure if that's quadruple layer number. All right, cool. Uh, appreciate the good info. Thanks for the live stream, except it keeps freezing. Uh, let me see. Um, man. Yeah, I put, hold on, let me see if I could, if I could, uh, can y'all hear me okay? I mean, is it, is it keep freezing? Can y'all comment or like or something? Tell me what's going on with the stream. Um, cause it's not saying anything on my end. All right, cool. Um, I don't know. Well, well, hopefully, hopefully the stream gets a little bit better. But um, anyways, so yeah, you want to come to the appointment prepared. So I have, I have about ninety percent of my deals negotiated before I get to the door. I don't want to come in there. I don't want to go back and forth. I don't want to come back a second time. I want to close the first time. And if they can't, if they're not willing to close on the first time, well, you know, I'll just throw you up on a follow up. And I'm pretty annoying at follow up, so if you don't close with me, you're gonna close with me eventually. Um, so next is yeah, have all the work done on the phone before going to the house. So have your comps ready, have your like whatever the seller asks for. If they ask for proof of funds, cool. Um, if they ask for your contract, cool. If they ask for you know, just have everything ready and have everything preset. You know, you don't want to come to the house unprepared. Like, go to the house with comps, and if they you know if they say hey, well. You know, my neighbor's house across the house sold for this much. Well, because you have comps and because you have done the work, right, prior to coming to the to the, uh, to the the deal, right, now you can show them, well, hey, Mr. Seller, the only reason why, you know, your neighbor's house sold for that much is because it was actually 2010 built. Um, it's actually, you know, yours is 1980 built. You know, theirs is updated. Yours isn't updated. You know what I mean? Come to the house prepared, bro. You know, I hate it. I hate it when people, like, come to a presentation. They don't have nothing. They don't have nothing to present the seller. You know, if you're going to set up all these expectations and look like a big shot before you get to the seller's house, and then you get to the seller's house and you don't have anything prepared, well, now you just look stupid. Good job. Um, so what else? Okay, so be firm and be the expert. So know your stuff, man. And just like I was just saying, you know, don't just come in there looking stupid. You know, don't have an, do not not have an answer if the seller says my neighbor's house across the street sold for 200 k do exactly what I said. Do your research. Well, Mr. Seller, that house was built in 2010. Yours is 1980. This is why they got that money. Yours is theirs is updated. This is why they got that money. Um, you know, they probably did a traditional sale. This is how a cash um, transaction works without fees, closing costs, or title or whatever. To be prepared. You know, just be prepared. Know your homework. If you don't know any of this stuff, you know, get on Google. Educate yourself. You know, I'll tell you guys something. That book flip that I just showed you, and again. Um, for those of you guys who didn't see it, this book, Flip, that I just showed you, I read this book. People ask me, how do you start real estate? I said, oh, yeah, I read this book. People look at me like I'm stupid. Like, oh, it can't be that easy. Like, you just can't read a book. And Well, yeah, it is it is actually that easy if you just freaking follow instructions, you know. I mean, you guys will you guys will get, you know, repetitively that I get really annoyed with dumb questions that can actually be found on the Internet. I hate that because, you know, it's just like, dude, I'm not fixing to wipe your ass for you. And, you know, show you how to do the thing from step one all the way to step 10. If you want it bad enough, you go get it, you know. So, you know, get this book flipped, man. Follow the instructions. Read it like two or three times or whatever. 
Um, and I'm not getting paid off of just promoting this this flipbook, so just understand. And, and you know, just just follow the instructions. Um, so we got yeah, be the expert. All right, here we go. We're fixing to go back in. All right, appreciate y'all hanging out, man. This has been a really good. All right, so getting to the closing table, I'm gonna tell y'all a story. <clears throat> I'm gonna tell y'all a story, okay? So. You only want to use the Trek contract. When I first got started, that book flip recommended a contract that I actually swiped off his website. I used it um, with the clause in there uh, that I think said contingent on my partner's approval or something like that. I, I mean, I, I didn't know any better. Hey, Steven, what's up, bro? Um, Tim Rogers, no repairs costs. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so Tim Rogers says know the repair costs and know your numbers as well. You definitely want to know that. Uh, we also got Matt Brown. You're good. I can perfectly hear you, Dustin. Uh, where are you finding your sellers? Um, Dust, or, oh, sorry, Dusty. Yeah, bro. Um, I've just been finding them straight off of like bandit signs. Uh, that's really all I do. Uh, I wish I could tell you more about, you know, anything else, but I've just been doing them off of direct or bandit signs and they're working great. Um, so yeah, so use the Trek contract or whatever your state mandated contract is. That's what you want to use. You don't want to use any custom contract. I'll tell you guys a story. Um, when I first started this business, I was using all these custom made contracts or whatever. Um, you know, and I, I wrapped up a deal in Garland, Texas. Garland, Texas is, is a very hot place. Um, and this was this was a number of months ago, right? Long story short, I mean the deal fell through. Um, it didn't go through, and you know, I clouded the title. Well, what ended up happening was because I didn't use the Trek contract that Texas like gives you to use, mine wasn't legally enforceable. So what would have happened if I would have used the Trek contract because this guy didn't show up to closing and conduct on the deal, I would have gotten the house for free. But because I didn't use the correct contract, his lawyer picked apart that contract and I was done. So I had no choice but to let the cloud go. So this is a mistake I will never make again. I will never not use the Trek contract. You want to use the Trek contract here if you're in Texas and uh, whatever uh, state or whatever area you're in. You just want to use the Trek contract. Trust me, it will save you a lot of money. It will save you a lot of time. Um, and the, the guy ended up suing me, by the way. Um, and nothing happened because I just had to let go. But um, anyway, so decide if you want to do an assignment or double close. Um, I mean, th this really depends. I mean, if you – okay, so for example, if some of you guys have deals and you bring them to me, I don't care if you're making 20 grand, 30 grand, 40 grand, 50 grand, or whatever grand. Just as long as I can make money – you can do an assignment for me. So now, for those of you who don't know, an assignment is actually, it doesn't cost you much to do an assignment. All you're literally doing is signing over your contract rights over to um, your buyer. But when you do that, everyone can see how you how much you make. That's why some people want to do double close. That's why, you know, some people are like, eh, I don't want people to see how much I'm making. It's more of like a moral thing versus like a, um, it, hold on. <clears throat> Yeah, so it's more of like a, a moral thing versus like a, you know, like a, if I'm cool with my buyer, it, it, it just depends on the relationship, you know, if you have a really cool buyer that like, that's in the know and he knows what's up, well, you know, you might consider doing an assignment because it's going to save you money. Now, if you do a double close, you're charged twice. Um, so just take into account, um, you know, I'll show you guys my first deal last year. Um, I think it's on my blog. Yeah, right here. So this was my first deal right here last year. Eighteen grand was um, was the uh, was was a profit. Now you guys can best believe I didn't show up for work for like hours after I went to you know I went to the bank and I closed that. I didn't work all day. I just kind of chilled, and you know I had a big happy smile on my face because you know like when I deposited this check, you know it finally dawned on me this is how rich people get wealthy. This is how the rich are making money doing stuff like that. And then like when I looked. Um, when I looked in the back and when, uh, like when I looked at things that I've done, I'm like, man, I really didn't spend that much time on this deal. I spent about two hours max on the deal. I have many more checks, I'm not, you know, but this is the only one that I thought was worth posting because this deal, you know, it it just like struck. It just struck with me, right? I mean, it was just like, man, six months of work, six months of not getting any results, six months of people talking mess. Like there was a guy at the dealership who was saying, man. You can't flip houses. You don't even own one. You don't even have your own apartment. You know, blah, 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 blah. You know, and then, like, I, you know, as soon as I closed the deal, I sent him that picture, and now he wants to get in real estate. And now I told him, F you. I don't want to help you because you were talking all that shit, right? So, you know, this was the first deal, and it just meant so much to me that I did this, right? Like, 
I made it. I can do it. This business is easy. So not to brag on me, but I'm just letting you guys know. If you guys want it bad enough, you guys could really do it. There's deals like this every day. Um, so we're going to get back to the PowerPoint. I'm going to talk about some other things um, as well. So don't forget, I mean, if you guys are tuning in Facebook Live, I'm also doing this webinar for my brokerage as well. Um, the owner is actually out of town. So, okay, so next is you want to submit your deal over to the title company and wait for closing. So ideally, once you have all your paperwork, your assignment, your double cl uh, contract close thing or whatever, your contract, earnest money or, or however you structure the deal, option money, uh, you want to submit everything over to your title company and like that's it. That's actually, yeah, that's it. All you have to do is just wait for them to give you a call and let you know when the closing date is. You may want to check in with your seller, like, hey, how you doing? Hey, we're looking to close, you know, this. We, you know, just send them a text. Just let them know what's going on. I mean, you know, these people, uh, sellers can be very erratic because, like, at this point, they're really antsy. Once, you know, they, they know that this is legit. They, they get a call from the title company. They're like, man, I'm fixing to get a, a $30,000 check. I'm ready for this. You know, they get really antsy. So you do want to keep up with the sellers and let them know, hey, this is what's going on. Um... If they have, you know, encumbrances on the title, uh, you know, liens or whatever stuff that's preventing them from a quick, easy close, you want to let them know about that stuff. Like, hey, you know, our lawyer is working on this. You do have this, this, and that. I mean, they know. You know, they know. They're not stupid. They know. So you just want to keep them, you know, comforted through the whole process. Um, buyers, you know, buyers don't care. They're just excited that they have a, a good deal. You know, I hit them up, like, the day before closing. Like, hey, you ready? You got money on deck. You're good to go, right? And they're like, yeah. Let's do this. Yeah, that's really it. Um, so after, um, you don't want to upgrade your life, man. I mean, I've had people that I've coached and done deals and, like, they get their first check. And, like, you know, three days later, I find them on a really expensive vacation. What is wrong with you, bro? You know, I understand that you really just, you, you want to splurge and want to do all this stuff. But look, but, hold on, sorry, guys, I got a phone call. But look. You don't, you want to reinvest all the money back into your business. You want to keep reinvesting back. You don't want to, you don't want to take any money out of the business. You want to keep going. You want to keep going. You want to keep reinvesting back in your business. And I'm going to not, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you guys. This is something that I actually messed up on. What I did, I didn't invest my, you know, I didn't buy any dumb things. You know, I didn't upgrade my life in any way. You know, to this day, I still shop at Walmart. You know, I still question one to $2 purchases. I'm like, man. You know what? Do we really need that? Can we buy the off brand? You know, I'm pretty cheap. And that's how that's how, I, you know, uh that's how I stacked. Um that's how I stacked, you know, so fast in the game was cuz I lived cheap. Um but anyways, you know, if you spend all your money, you're not going to have any anything else to reinvest back in the business. Um so don't be stupid, don't upgrade your life, you know, just stay, you know, stay low, stay relevant. Um, so yeah, reinvest your profits back in the business. So what I did, um, you know, after the deals that I had uh, come over this last year, I bought like a thousand bandit signs, um, and you know, I just went, I just went in, I just went ham. I ended, we ended up picking two rehab deals, um, so those paid off very much. Um, so the next thing about the real estate game, man, is it's not this like overnight thing real estate is actually a long-term game and this is why i saw value in keeping my day job because of that because you know deals take you know months sometimes to close i had a deal that took six months to close i've heard of people deals taking two years to close you know i mean you got to be patient you know you got to keep moving forward you got to look forward you got to find new deals you got to find fresh leads you can't just stay stuck on your one deal so it's really a long-term game so that's why you know, looking back now, um, I would always suggest that you do keep your day job. Some people, some people are like, yeah, man, uh, I'm just going to do this full time and, you know, I'm, I'm going to do my thing or whatever. Hey, that's cool. But, you know, me personally, I found value in keeping my day job. Um, and we got, so be patient and don't expect to close a deal tomorrow. So this is another thing, right? So, I mean, I'd have, we'd have, um, you know, we'd have campaigns, uh, me and my team, we'd have campaigns of bandit signs. We'd drop 100 bandit signs every week, 100 every freaking week. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of signs every week. That takes about three, four hours to finish, right? And, um, excuse me, and, um, you know, at first, when we first started, we were getting like 20 phone calls, 20 phone calls every week, which is pretty good because most of them are motivated seller leads. 
Um, we closed some of them and we picked them up. And then like three months later, we kept on doing the same thing and we didn't get any calls, right? Any calls whatsoever. And then, like, I was like, you know, what the hell is going on? And then next week, like, we get a call and then that ended up being a rehab deal for me. You know, so, I mean, I'm not going to say, you know, you put out X amount of bandit signs, you put out X amount of direct mail or ads that you're going to find this happens to you tomorrow. All I'm saying is, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's just the name of the game. It's, it's just patience, man. I mean, you know, I know I'm young. I'm 22 years old. I, I you know, I, I know that there's people here listening to me that are a little bit older, but, you know, I'm just letting you know in this game, I know I'm talking about wholesaling and rehabbing. I mean, it's, it's all a patience game. I mean, it's not a tomorrow, get rich quick scheme. I'm going to do the thing tomorrow. It's, it's seriously a patience game. Um, so yeah, be patient. Um, next, you, next thing you want to do is you do want to set up an LLC, um, with a bank account and you want to park your money that you're doing business in that bank account. So I'm gonna give you guys a little tip. Um, when you set up your LLC, what you want to do is obviously you do want to set up a bank account for it and you want to park all your money there. So, well, from the business anyway, so that you can reinvest and it just, you just keep building up. Right. Um, one of the things I have learned is you do not want to buy houses in your personal name. You don't want to put your personal name on anything. At the end of the day, it always has to be an LLC. Why? Because if something goes haywire, um, you know, you're liable for it. So, for example, I'm flipping a house in my personal name and something happens. Well, you know, whoever sues me has to sue me because my name is like on the house. So they sue me. And what ends up happening is I have a possibility of losing everything that I own, cars, assets, house, um, whatever. Anything that's attached to my name, I could lose it. But now, if it's in an LLC, whoever is suing you has to sue the LLC. And if you're smart, the only thing that's going to be in the LLC is the house that you're currently holding. And I mean, hey, if you lose it, you lose it. But, you know, I'm going to just tell you this way. It's way better to lose, you know, one business house or whatever transaction um, than it is to lose you know, like everything you own. Um, next, I think that might be it. Um, I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of bonus stuff real quick. Um, so email, um, you can you can hit me up, princepatridge uh, at gmail.com. I'm on Snapchat a lot, prince underscore P-A-R-R. Uh, don't ask me how that happened. Facebook, LinkedIn, everything's Prince Patridge. Um, I do wanna show you guys something else that has helped me uh, become successful in this game. And then I'm gonna let you guys go because now I wanna do something else. All right, so check this out all right so right so this is my blog right so if you, you're interested in checking out my blog checking out some of the stuff i, I post a lot of free stuff on there it's uh prince ejpatridge.com prince ejpatridge.com it's prince patridge with an ej in the middle uh, prince ejpatridge.com that's my blog so check this out right so you're going to see a, a picture of a, a group of guys right so this group right here is called the empire i started this group back in like 2000 i don't know 13 or whatever and I started it with the vision of us networking and just kind of, you know, getting to the money. We didn't have exactly for it to be like real estate or whatever um, at the time. But all we wanted to do was get to the money, right? So anyways, up to date, this group right here has closed about $300,000 in gross profit in closed transactions. Closed transactions, 300 k Every single one of these guys has been in the game for a year or less. Um... And it's, I mean, it's freaking awesome, man, because, you know, I go, I go to these meetup groups and like, you know, you see all these people attend the meetup groups and like everyone there is like a square one. They don't know how to do this. They don't know how to write a contract. They don't know how to do this. And I look back and I'm like, man, I'm proud to be associated with these group of guys right here. Cause most of these guys that you see in the picture have closed deals, are working deals, actually are in the trenches. I'm, I'm in the trenches with them. We're actually grinding. And like, when you go to these meetings that we have, like, it's like powerful. It's like. Every time I go to these meetings, I make more money, I close more deals, and I just it kind of just brings me to the conclusion that, you know, you are who you hang out with, right? So, you know, if you're hanging out with a bunch of lames that are just over here smoking weed and just doing drugs and drinking alcohol all day, where do you think you're going to be, right? But if you hang out with a group of guys that are doing something that are 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 are, are kind of are, are kind of trying to get to the money, trying to get towards the goals, you know, the idea is you're going to pick that up too, you know. So you're going to so. Anyways, so, you know, I mean, this group is awesome. I mean, most of these guys have closed deals, fix and flips, uh, wholesale. I mean, whatever, you name it, these group of guys have done it. And I'm so proud to be associated with this group of guys. Um, 
So we have these meetings. Uh, there's another picture. Here's here's our most recent one um, meetup that we had. I think this was back in September. Um, there's more. Um, you know, we have these meetups about every quarter. Um, they're held in Dallas. Um, so I mean, if if you're in the area. Um, definitely come by, swing by, and see what the group is all about. Because if you ask me, if you live in Dallas and you ask me how to do real estate, I'm just going to say, hey, come to the meeting. I don't want to explain everything I just explained right now because it just it just takes up too much time. So I'm going to tell you, just come to the meeting and listen to what these guys have to say. Um, next is we are doing a meetup as well, um, Top Golf. It's going to be in the colony. It's going to be this Saturday. So if you're around, uh, check it out. It's going to be fresh. Um, but uh, – at the same time, too, we are also thinking about throwing webinars. I mean, webinars like these, more like group hangout things and kind of discussing because we only have these these meetings every quarter. Um, so, you know, we've been thinking about, um, you know, just having them, you know, just having them on, on online, too. Um, but anyways, yeah, that was really all I had to explain. I appreciate you guys hanging out. Um, people from my brokerage, uh, people on Facebook Live. I thought we had a lot of, a lot of activity. Um, I'll stick around for about five minutes. So, I mean, if you guys have any questions, man, just shoot, shoot them over. Um, cause I, I, you know, I feel like I'm gonna do something else. So yeah, if you guys have questions, um, I'll probably stick around till about like, what time is it? It's 11 four. I'll probably say, yeah, I'll, I'll probably stick around until about 11 10. Appreciate y'all guys coming out. So this is my contact information. If you have questions, man, just type them up in the chat box and I'll answer them the best I can. <clears throat> Bennett sign plug. Yeah, James, um, you want to go to uh, dirtcheapsigns.com. Dirtcheapsigns.com. That's where I get all the Bennett signs. Ask away, guys. Let me know. If y'all have questions, man, I'm, I mean, I'm answering them. We're at the uh, conclusion of um, of uh, the webinar, man. Let me know. Let me know what y'all got. say you did a deal in Los Angeles uh Eric no I, di I didn't do a deal in Los Angeles um what I meant to say was I was in Los Angeles and I was doing deals here in Texas like I wrapped up wholesales I had fix and flips going on uh but I leveraged my team in order to do that um Alex what moment defined your first year in real estate um like mo like w like when I started like the exact start date or like what, what do you mean could you kind of elaborate a little bit on that Q&A, guys. Q&A. Keep them coming, man. I love these questions. These questions are really dope. Q and A, Q and A. If you got questions, man, keep them coming. We just had a fire uh, webinar. I hope all my brokerage people enjoyed it. I hope uh, all the Facebook Live peeps joined it. It was live. We had comments. This thing was popping. So keep them coming. All 
Oh, also, um, I'm gonna put up a, a replay of the video. I'm, I'm just gonna post it on YouTube. So, uh, if you if you didn't get a chance to hear, it's gonna be on YouTube. Uh, Alex, in terms when you first started getting your foot in the door, what made you say this is what I want to do? Um, yeah. So, um, Alex, man, to answer your question, kind of what, what made me want to do real estate, man, was uh, it was just it was a funny story because um, it was either. It was either going to be I forgot. It was like either going to be like stocks, uh, stock market, the uh, the car business, or uh, I, I forgot. You know, and I was just going through real estate, and I saw like the book Flip over here, and you know, I was just like, man, you know what? Uh, you know what? I'm you know, it's 19 bucks. I'm gonna give this a shot because at the time, um, the stock market courses that I was seeing online were like you know five grand, three grand. I mean, they're pretty expensive. So I picked this one up. And, you know, I decided it was kind of easy. Um, it was something that was tangible for me. That was a big plus um, versus something that was intangible. This was something that I could control, controlling the equity in the contract. So, you know, um, I just kind of made a decision. I was like, man, you know what? You know, I, I told my girl about it. I was like, man, I'm, I'm going to give this about, you know, six months. And if, if it doesn't work, you know, I'm, I'm going to dip. I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm going to quit. And she said, yeah. And you know, six months, so six months were crucial, and then after that, man, I mean, I, I got my first deal, and after I got my first deal, I just stayed committed, so I, I hope that answers your question, Alex, um, keep them coming, uh, we got about two more minutes, I'll give it two more minutes right now, uh, Leo says, what do you recommend to those who are wanting to start and scared, man, um, I get those questions every day, bro, uh, you know, the biggest thing you really want to do, man, is, is honestly just get started, um, if you're scared, um, start with something low, like ten bandit signs or ten direct mail pieces or whatever. Just kind of, kind of get see how the groove is going, and you know after that, just kind of make a decision from there. But um, really, the the major thing is is just getting started. Um, you know, just getting started. So uh, if if y'all want to know who the main uh, team player is on my team, it looks like my girl Michelle just joined. So shout out to Michelle. Um, that was actually a lot of the motivation of why I didn't quit. So, um, anyways, it was about eleven ten, man. So, I mean, if you guys have a couple more questions, you know, I'll answer a couple of them. So, let me know what's up. Let me know what's up. Yeah, you're welcome, Leo. Um, hoping to see you on Saturday, bro. All right, so uh, yeah, it's about eleven eleven. Um, so I think I'm, I'm gonna do something else now. So um, man, if you guys don't have any questions or if there was something that you missed, uh, I'm gonna put the replay up. Uh, message me, message me directly um, if you do want the, um, uh, the the webinar replay. I'm gonna post this thing up on YouTube. Um, yo, Matt, man, I appreciate you, bro. Man, I appreciate I appreciate man. Shout out to the real estate reformation team, man. They they be out there working. Um, but um anyways yeah so if you if you uh, have questions man just dm me just reach out to me i mean i make it pretty easy um to find me so all right y'all so um i'm out so i mean i hope y'all got some knowledge man put in that work it's really not as hard as people think um just get out there take action appreciate it